All right, so we've 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 done this in this class, but we haven't exactly talked about it. So we're gonna we're gonna spend today talking about some specific things, making you aware of some of the things that we do, and we're gonna do a little bit of work with tables of values in particular. And then I think tomorrow and Friday we're gonna do some different activities that sort of help us think, and then next week we're gonna do more all different kinds of stuff, but making ourselves aware of some of the stuff that we're doing, okay? Um, so we have looked at relationships, and again, a relationship is just a different way of talking about a pattern. A relationship could be something like one number is twice as big as another. Somebody give me an example of two numbers where one is twice as big as another. Four and two. Four and two. Another one. Another one. Okay, somebody else. 20. 21 and 42. I love it. 50 and 100. 100, 200. Somebody, anybody else? Wanna, Noah, what about you? You think of two numbers where one is twice as big as the other? I love it. One and two. This is a, okay, that's good. That's lots. I know you can come up with a lot. We can sit here all day and come up with numbers. <laughs> this is a relationship. This is a pattern. We can do all kinds of, I just wrote it down in a table. A table is another way of thinking about like pairs of numbers that go together, X then Y. I could graph it. I go over one, up two, over one, up two, over one, up two. Over 50, up 100, over 100, up 200, right? They're going to form a straight line. If we, if we didn't know that, again, we're being made aware of that today. That's something we want to know. You may have noticed it, but you may not have really thought about it. Hey, those are all straight lines. The other thing I can do is I can make an equation or a rule that will come up with all the pairs of numbers. And we're not going to do this yet, but eventually we will. But... I've done it before, so there's my rule. Y is equal to 2 times X. In other words, my rule is you take a number, multiply it by 2, that gives you the other number. I take a number, I multiply it by 2, that gives me the other number. I take my number 3, multiply it by 2, gives me 6. Take my number 21, multiply it by 2, gives me 42. Does my rule work? Okay. So we've got a table of values. X, Y, I've got a graph, it's a straight line, I've got an equation or a rule. These are all different ways that we can represent what we call relationships or patterns. And there are other kinds of patterns in the world. They're not all straight lines. In grade 10, you learn about some different patterns. Okay? And then if you took like the grade 12 class that I'm teaching right now, we learn about all kinds of patterns, but we're not worried about that right now. Okay, but it's just, a, it's just a fancy way of talking about patterns. Why would it be useful to have a rule? Anybody have an idea? If my rule gets more complicated, y equals 4x minus 7, it's harder to do in your head. Like You can all do the, the 2x rule easy. Doubling things, right? Yeah, so you can you can come up with all the different values using your rule. That's good, like we did yesterday, and I can graph it and that kind of thing. Where would you see this in the real world? Well, we've done some of these activities, things like uh, buying cookies at the store. So if one cookie costs twenty-five cents, how much would 50 cookies cost. That's a rule. And the computer that they use in the grocery store to calculate how much you have to pay knows that rule, or the person who's calculating the cost knows that rule. That one would be like the cost, here I'll use this, whoops. Uh, the cost equals 0 0.25 cents times the number of cookies. There's your rule. Right? And we're not doing any of this yet, so we're, don't worry about that. But 
right? That's why we have rules because it can help you find. Or what if a comp, what if somebody what if a school is buying cookies for the dance and they want to buy 480 cookies? Well, it's a little bit harder to find the cost. So if we have a, a formula that can solve it for us, it makes it a little bit easier. Does that make sense? So we have these different ways that we can talk about things. We, we've looked at how you can write all them in a table of values. So you have a list of points, the x's and the y's, or the number of cookies and the cost, or the, or the number of months and the cost of your cell phone plan, or how far you've traveled and how much your cab costs. All these different relationships. As a graph, that way you can see if your cost is increasing over time or decreasing over time and if it's straight line, if it's linear or sometimes we see costs that are curved like that or something. Okay, And then our rule as an equation. And these in grade 9, these are the three main ways we represent relationships. Does that make sense? So everything we do over the next several weeks is going to come back to those three ways of talking about rules and patterns. Okay, those three three ways of talking about rules and patterns and how we can change from one to another, how we can draw graphs with one, or how we can understand the rule. If I give you a graph, can you figure out the rule? If I give you a table, can you figure out the graph? Like all these, that's what we did yesterday kind of thing. All these different things that we can do. Or if I just give you a scenario, can you figure out all of them? Can you come up with the table? Can you come up with the rule and can you graph it? But we don't have to do all of that today, we've only looked at one of those things. I, yesterday I gave you the rule and you made the table and you made the graph, right? But we're going to practice and notice things, patterns, things that come up, things that will help us for the next few weeks. But what we're going to do today is we're going to do something with tables, but we're also going to notice in general what's the difference between a linear relation and a nonlinear relation. What do you think linear means? Perfect. Straight line. So what's nonlinear? Who said that? Yeah, curved. Somebody else said? Not a straight line. So a curved line or something else. Maybe it's not even a line. It's like just a scatter of dots. Okay. So anything that's not a straight line, we're going to say is not linear or nonlinear. But if it's a straight line, it's linear. And again, in grade 9, we talk mostly about linear patterns, things that form straight lines. Like I give you a number, you double it. Straight line. Or all the graphs we did yesterday were straight lines. Does this make sense? What do you think? So this is stuff we're noticing. So we can determine if a relationship is a straight line, linear or not, from a graph is really easy. From an equation, turns out it's pretty easy, but you probably don't know yet. But once I show it, once I tell you, it's pretty easy. And then a table of values is a little bit harder. That's what we're mostly focusing on today. But the graph is the easiest. Which one of these three, which ones of these three are linear relationships? And which ones are nonlinear? Cole, give me, tell me about one. The first one's linear. How do you know? Okay, so write that down. Linear. Look at it. It's a straight line. You're done. That's how easy it is. Damien, what do you think about that? Straightforward? Easy? Does it make sense? Does it not make sense? Like, it seems weird, maybe, but trust me, it, it doesn't get harder than that. You just want to remember Damien, the second one, is it linear or nonlinear? Nonlinear, how do you know? It's not straight, perfect. There's nothing more to it than that. So this one's non linear. It's not straight, it's a curved line. This is a special, guys, this is, turns out this is a special type of relationship that you will learn about in grade 10. And the last one, somebody different. Good. Because it's a curve as well. That's a totally different one. You will do some work with stuff like that in grade two. Everybody okay with that? Any questions? 
How do you tell from a graph if a relationship is linear or nonlinear? You look at it. Is it a straight line? But you need to know what the word linear means. Is it a straight line? And an equation is actually also very easy, but it's not as obvious, and it's something you need to remember. And what you will notice is pretty much every equation we look at in grade, or every rule we look at in grade 9 looks very much the same, used to it. And then some of the rules look different. And when you see one that's different for some reason, you say, this must be nonlinear. So what we do is we look at the exponents. If you see an exponent on a variable, it is nonlinear. If there are no exponents, that means the exponents are 1, but you know we don't have to worry about that right now. But you know that. The exponent's 1. It's linear. So the first one, is it linear or nonlinear? You look at the exponents. Julian, do you see any exponents in the first one? In A, look right here. Look up. Do you see exponents? No. Does X have an, an exponent? What do you think? Elena, what do you think? Or maybe this is a better question. Tell me where there is an exponent somewhere. Tariq? What's the exponent? The 2. Very good. Perfect, though. The 4x squared here has an exponent. That's the exponent, right? That's what an exponent is. So this one is nonlinear. That's how easy it is. So Julian, do you want to answer for A? What do you think? Yeah. Do you see exponents? No. No exponents. So this one's linear. Good. Right? And what about the last one? Haley, what do you think? Do you see an exponent? You do? Where? <laughs> What's it, what, what is it? What number is it? It's a 2. It's on the T. So that means this one is nonlinear. That's pretty easy, but it's specific. So it's also easy to forget. So try to remember, and, and when, as we work on this more, try to get used to what a linear relationship looks like. It looks like that. Doesn't this look like something we might have graphed yesterday? Yes. If you look at the homework sheet from yesterday, there were no exponents on it. Right? And they were all linear. That's what you want to notice. No, you had your hand up. You sure? Any questions about that? Okay. So here we go. This one requires a little bit more work. We're going to each relation is linear or nonlinear. When you're looking at a graph, you can't tell for sure. So what we're going to do is something called first differences. And all we're doing is looking for the change in y's. So notice how the x's are going up by 1's. Up 1, up 1, up 1, up 1. Notice that? What are my y's changing by? From negative 1 to 1, what is it? That went up 2. What does the next one go up? Goes up 2. Caleb, what does the next one go up? From 3 to 5, what is that? Up 2. 5 to 7, Damien? Up 2. What do we notice? Huh? So is X first? Or is Y first? X, we almost always write X first. Well, wouldn't it be, so, X is the oh, good question. I'm not going this direction. I'm going this direction. That's why I did these little ticks, but I didn't say that. So good. That out. The other thing that we're doing is we're doing like 3 minus 1 is 2. 5 minus 3 is 2. 7 minus 5 is 2. Like we're subtracting the lower minus the upper, but I think the easiest way to think about it is what's the change? From 3 to 5 is up 2. From 5 to 7 is up 2. Everybody got that okay? What does this mean? 
I'm going to look at a graph here. Take a look at what, the, oh, wait. Think about this. When I have a graph, okay, I start here, let's say. Can you see that all right? And I go over one, and I go up two, over one, up two, over one, up two, over one, up two. So every time I go over one, I'm going up the same amount. What do you notice about those points? They're straight. Straight line. What if I changed it? What if I went, I'm going to start here. What if I went over one, up one, and then from there over one, up two, and from there over one, up three, and then over one, up four? My ups are changing, so it's a curved line. Right? But if my ups are the same, it's always it's like a staircase. It's always going to be straight. Don't you think picture that in your head? Imagine a staircase where the stairs are different heights. Spencer, can you picture that? You can't do that. A staircase where the first one is small and the second one's like bigger, the next one's like bigger. That would be really weird. You'd trip and fall and break your neck. It wouldn't be a straight staircase up. On a diagonal, right? Staircase is pretty much always every step is the same height and the same width. And the staircase is a straight line diagonally up. Doesn't that make sense? And it's because of this over, up, over, up, over, up, over, up. Okay, so um, since all first, write this down. Differences are equal or the same. You don't have to write this every time, but we're going to write this this time. This relation is linear. But normally you just say, therefore, linear. And I'm just going to make a little note of it like that as well so we kind of see it in both ways. The first differences are all 2. What if it was 2, 2, negative 2, 2? Is that all the same? No. No. 2 and negative 2 are not the same. That would be like over 1, up 2, over 1, up 2, over 1, down 2 over one up to, that's not linear, right? What if most of them are the same, but one of them is different? It's not linear. If you get three the same and one different, you probably made a mistake, so I would check my math. That doesn't usually happen. OK, let's try another one. So can't, you can go ahead and do it. What's the change? From 4 to 6. Hold on. So 2, what do you mean by 2? We went up 2. Good. Okay, do the next one. Do it quietly. What's the next one? Okay, so stop right there. I know what you're thinking, but I don't want you to... We're, we're going to talk about that in a minute. So 6 to 9 is a change of 3, up 3. Aliyah, what's the next one? Say again. Up 4, good, plus 4. What's the next one? Spencer, do you know the next one? 13 to 18? What do you think? Five. I went up 5, good. Are they, are they all the same? But there's a pattern. Right? Pattern doesn't matter. I mean, it does mean something, but for us, the pattern doesn't matter. Not all equal. Therefore, non-linear. Are we okay with that? See, we're noticing very specific things today. 
we've, we've sort of done this stuff in activities or in other uh, pieces of work that we've done, but we haven't really pointed out and talked about it. So today we're talking about it a bit more. Tariq, what were you going to say? <coughs> were you going to say that these are going up by one? Oh, something else? Okay. Anybody have any questions? I think we're going to do one more. What is there? One more? You guys have the hand up. Oh, there's supposed to be there's supposed to be another one. We'll make it up. Ah, Tariq, what did you just say? So what what do you mean by subtracting? They're going down. The Ys are going down. Notice this is still going up. One, two, three, four. But from 10 to 7 is down 3. So we're going to write minus 3. For down, we're going to write minus. Ooh. Down 3. Down 3. Oh, this one looks linear. Wait a minute. Down 1. Therefore, non-linear. Very good. So again, think about this. If I start at 10, and then I went over 1 and I went down 3, that was to 7. And then I went over 1 and I went down 3, that was to 4. Those ones are linear. And then I went down 3 to 1. I'm going down 3 every time. Right? But then I went over 1, down 1. So that broke the pattern. This was linear until I got there. Then the angle kind of changed. You see? So not linear because one didn't fit, but the rest fit. Any questions? I want to talk about one more. I don't think it's, let me just check something. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do X. You can just watch. You don't even have to write this down. Okay, so what's my change here? Okay, but what's my change? No, no. Adding. We're always adding. Good, good, good notice. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Yeah, you do. So what did I add in this case? Which is, which is what for the first one? One to two is not plus two. One plus two is three. Plus one. Thank you, Haley. What do I add in the second case? Two, two plus four, four plus, 16. plus eight, plus 16. Cole already said it. You're multiplying by two. You notice that there's a pattern. The pa that means something. In mathematics, absolutely. But it's not linear. For linear, they have to be the same. And Cole said there's always doubling. It's always So it's always multiplying by 2. But first difference is, is adding only. So we're not. it's not that we're looking for a pattern. It's not that we're looking for something that happens every time. We're looking for the difference when you add. And if that's the same every time, it's linear. Does that make sense? That's the only time that it's linear. Okay, any questions about that? 